Hey friends, Budget Girl here, welcome back. So good to see you, I hope you're doing well. Beating the heat? Awesome. Well, it's time for another question and answer video. You guys have been submitting a lot and I'm excited to answer them. Let's get into it. A lot of these were in response to my finishing baby step three video, which I will link below. I am um, the happy owner of $10,000 in the bank, just in case the universe decides it doesn't like me one day. So a lot of these questions at the beginning are going to be for that. Keep that in mind. Also, don't forget to go ahead and like this video and subscribe for more frugal ridiculousness. As always, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them below. I might include them in an upcoming Q&A. First off, do you plan to buy a house at some point? Probably. I would love to do the house hacking thing where you buy like a duplex, live in one side, burn out the other, do Airbnb, something like that. But as I said in the previous video, I'm not saving for a house right now because I'm not certain that College Station is where I'm going to be super long term. Something could happen. Also, I'm contracted into this awesome little apartment for three years. So I have a little bit of time to decide where I'm gonna be and what I'm gonna do. There's also a lot of freedom in renting versus buying. I obviously am in a much better financial situation right now than I was a few years ago, but I'd like to be in an even better one before I purchase real estate. And that includes saving a very large down payment, learning more about the market, etc. I'm just not gonna rush into it. Eventually, yeah, I could see myself being a homeowner or even owning multiple properties and being a landlord type person. It's a great source of somewhat passive in income, but I'll let the people over at Bigger Pockets and like Scott Trench teach all about that. <laughs> Link them below. <laughs> Next up, if you make around $2,000 a month, why didn't you save $12,000 as your fully funded emergency fund? Excellent question. So I mentioned that I saved $10,000 because I wanted to have a larger fully funded emergency fund. And I also mentioned that that would be about seven to eight months worth of expenses for me. Now, several of you caught on that that isn't quite six months worth of income for me. But here's the thing, I don't spend all of the income that I have. So I actually make about, I make more than $2,000 a month. I just save a large portion of it. If you look at my budget and I'll link a playlist of my budgets below, which you can see the exact numbers of what I bring in and where I spend it. A lot of what is in my main budget is savings. So until just recently, there was a $600 box saying every single month, this is going to go to your emergency fund. Now that's going elsewhere, but there's also other savings categories. I have a long-term savings in there. I also have sinking funds, which is for saving for upcoming expenses like annual shots for Rory, for Christmas, for eventual car repairs and replacement, all sorts of money that I set aside. Now in the case of a major emergency, I wouldn't keep saving for all of those things. I would go into storm mode, as many of you guys have heard us call it. So if there were some big issue, say I lost my job, I would amend my budget into an emergency budget, which I have a really great video on. I don't usually toot my own horn, but I want you to watch that how to make an emergency budget video that I'm gonna link down below because it tells you how to go ahead and calculate what your minimum expenses are so you know how much you need to survive an emergency. It's very useful information to have because it's not as much as you think. <laughs> it's essentially just food, keeping your lights on, keeping a roof over your head, all of that kind of stuff. You're gonna cut out in an emergency all of the non-essentials. So you don't need as much money as you're currently bringing in if you've got your money a little bit diversified, going to debt, going to savings, going to other money type things. So my number is actually a lot lower than $2,000 that I would need per month per my emergency budget. So $10,000 would actually last me quite a bit longer than six months. And that's why that is the number that I arrived at. I knew that it would, it would take care of me for a nice long time. But excellent question, way to look at the numbers. That's what we're all about. Next up, do I still have the $1,000 baby emergency fund as well as my $10,000 fully funded emergency fund? No. Your fully funded emergency fund 
is an extension of your baby emergency fund. Once you've got your fully funded emergency fund, you don't really need your baby anymore because you've got a bigger one there. Now, some people I do know keep a secondary kind of stash of cash um, that isn't for a major emergency because it helps differentiate in their head. You know, this money is just for if something slightly unexpected comes up that's not an emergency versus this money over here, we're going to put a big fence around and we're only going to touch it if there's an explosion. Figurative, hopefully not literal. So I do have a little bit of other savings. I have sinking funds, I have long-term savings, but I don't have a separate thousand dollar emergency fund. I just built my fully funded emergency fund on top of that. So really only saved $8,000 because I already had a 2K baby emergency fund going through the debt process. Okay, two questions in one. Do you save money every month for a newer car for when the time comes for you to get one? And two, if your car were to suddenly stop running, would you take it from your 10 grand or do you have a separate fund for it? Now, I do have a separate car repair slash replace sinking fund. There is only enough money in there right now kind of to repair it. So if my car were to stop running right this second, it'd be baby step three time. I would have to access that to get myself a new car with cash, which would be fine. That would be an emergency. I am, however, starting to save now for a newer car, and I do believe that if you are out of baby step two, or even if you're in baby step two, because I had to do this, and you know that your car is a clunker and it could go at any minute, to go ahead and start stockpiling a little bit of money every month in a sinking fund, for when that happens. I did this when I lived in Arkansas. I knew that my little tracker was not going to make it through my debt free journey. RIP, it did what it could. <laughs> but I saved an extra two grand for a new car that combined with a thousand dollars of my emergency, baby emergency fund. I paid three grand cash for the car that I have now. So that worked out really well for me. Obviously, yes, it did take away a little bit from what I could contribute to my debt payoff, but I don't think it did a long term. And also it really came in handy for me when I lived in Arkansas and the tracker stopped working and would not drive anymore. Pieces fell out of that car that the mechanics were stumped by. They don't know how they got out. They shouldn't have been able to get out like things like that are supposed to be like this. This was over here. It was just gone. I did a number on it, but I had the money in the bank to pay cash for a new car, which I did. And I definitely think that if you are in the same situation that I was in, or really in any sort of money situation, you should be saving up for things that are going to die on you eventually. Even if you buy a brand new car, eventually that one's going to die and you're going to need the money to pay for a newer one. So, now I am actively saving for a better car than I have now. I have no real warning signs that this one's going to crap out on me anytime super soon, but I would like to upgrade that soon so I'm not dealing with a lot of costly repairs towards the end of its life. Next up, short story time. Hey BG, I'm a dog lover like you and one of my four dogs got sick and my emergency fund was hit for almost $600. My sinking funds were set up but nothing had been deposited except the initial amount. Although I would have done the same thing to help my fur baby, I felt like once my EF was hit, I took the hit and fell off the wagon. I was devastated and started to spend out of control and was making excuses for like, I deserve it or you've already blew it so you might as well go ahead and get what you want. You mentioned in your video that you've had to dip into your emergency fund several times over the course of four years. How did you get yourself back on track? And did you really go back to baby step one and fund it and put baby step two on hold? Um, I hope you're able to give me some advice because I'm struggling. Okay, this is a, I'm, I'm so glad your dogs are better, by the way. I, Rory, I'd do anything for her. I really would. For your question on if I went back to baby step one, absolutely. Every single time I had to access my emergency fund, I went immediately into like scared mode because once you have an emergency fund, generally it feels like your safety net against the world, the world or your umbrella in a storm. You clutch that thing. So any time that dipped down below its full amount, I was like, gotta get it up, gotta get it up, gotta get it up. And I stopped everything. I kept making minimum payments on my debt and usually it wasn't more than a month of kind of having to go 
from making extra payments on my debt to refunding my emergency fund, but I absolutely did it. And that's where a lot of people make a mistake is they access the refund. They don't want to quit putting money at their goals and then another emergency hits and they're out of their e-fund and they feel just dejected like nothing that they don't have anything to show for all their hard work. Don't feel that way. And I have a story that will give you an example of this. Hopefully it helps because I found it super inspiring. This is from Better Life Broadcasting who said, without prompt, well done, you get it. It gets more complicated from here as life dictates events move forward and backwards through the baby step. We were on baby step six and making great headway when a home repair came at the same time as a sudden illness and eventual death in the family. It just wiped out our dear old baby step three. At first we were horrified, but then we were so grateful that it was there. The house was fixed, the expenses were all covered, and we're still not in debt. Baby step three will save you from the kind of nightmares that can take years to recover from otherwise. Just to have the ability to cash flow about $27,000 worth of unexpected bills in four months rather than remortgage the house is worth all the effort. Mind you, now we gotta do it all again, but such is life. Now, this situation from Better Life Broadcasting is exactly why you don't let yourself fly off the rails if you've had to access one of your emergency fund, whether it's your baby emergency fund or your fully funded emergency fund. Because, because you had it there means that that emergency situation that hit you affected your life less. And if you think of it that way, that you can be grateful that you had the money there instead of being in the kind of panic mode you would have before if it had happened and you didn't have any money there makes you a little bit more grateful for it. So I would advise you to try to get back on, refill your emergency fund, thank your stars and the Lord that you had it there so that you could help your dog and move forward with your money goals. If you take that type of mindset towards it, that it's there to be used and that you worked for it, it's not gonna feel like a failure as much. So I believe in you, I believe you can get back on track. I believe all of you guys can get back on track because that's what the emergency fund is for. Because one day the universe is gonna decide that it doesn't like you very much. And you can either be prepared for it or you can let it knock you down. Either way you can get back up though. Because you can, you're strong. So that's all the questions we have time for today. I would love to hear more from you guys. Hit me with them. I got answers, I got opinions and I hope you like them. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more frugal ridiculousness. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.